What is going on, beautiful people? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. As always, I'm grateful for you. I'm pumped that you're here. And the fact that you spend your time listening to me rant and rave is unbelievably amazing to me. And I, I couldn't be more grateful for it. Secondarily, this podcast is sponsored by a brand new product that I have just released to the market. It's called Elite Collagen. If you're not taking a collagen product, then you just don't care about your healthy skin, your healthy hair, your healthy nails, your joints, your cardiovascular health, just your overall body wellness. Collagen is an amazing product that is going to help with everything. And listen, I mean, you're exposed to a lot of elements. Why not internally fortify your system with a beautiful collagen? But here's the situation. Some of you guys are, no, hey, bud, I'm already taking a collagen. Appreciate you. Got you. I got bad news. The problem is this. Most collagen powders are just that. They're powdered collagens, and they're made from bovine, which is cows, or porcine, which is pig's skin. Have you ever seen a cow skin or a pig skin? Some of them are plant-derived. We won't even get into those. The collagen, it's not even really a collagen product. It's a, a makeup of stuff that tries to become collagen. But if you're taking a collagen powder, one of those big hefty collagen, gross, chalky, whatever it is, just know that it's coming from skin of cows and pigs. And of course they wash them. But if you've ever been at a pig farm or a cow farm, not the most savory of things. My collagen is a marine-based collagen. And here's the big thing. Forget all the other shit I've already said. Here's the differentiation between mine and the one you're already taking. Mine is half a tablespoon every day. It's a delicious chocolate mint flavor. And here's, here's the big stuff. Here's the, here's the real deal. Here's what nobody's telling you. The powdered collagens get broken down inside of the gastrointestinal stomach, inside of the stomach. That's not where collagen gets absorbed. Collagen actually gets absorbed and has a higher efficacious benefit if it's absorbed in the small intestine. Well, see, mine passes through the stomach based on a beautiful collection of, of polymers and a collection of these peptides. If you heard that, that's just Rudy taking a sneeze. He likes to be introduced in some of these podcasts and I didn't give him a proper shout out. But my collagen actually passes through the stomach and gets digested inside of the small intestine, which is where all the magic happens. Your powder product's not even making it there. So you're getting very minimal, if any, efficacious um, effects from drinking that chalky, gross tasting powder product. So if you're interested, just go to thriveforeverfit.com. Go to my store. You'll see Elite Collagen on there. You can pop me a note. I'll give you all the details. It is unbelievably amazing. I've been taking it for a while um, because I've been testing it and, and creating it and everything. Guys, it is revolutionary and it is unbelievable. I can't wait for you to try it. Elite Collagen. Go grab yourself some today. Take care of your skin. Heather, welcome to the Thrive Forever Fit Show. How you doing? Good. How are you? I am doing awesome. Just as a little disclaimer, guys, Heather Norton is one of my Thrive Forever Fit coaching clients. She's been in my program for just about 300 days, which is awesome. I just looked that up this morning and you've had quite the, the transformation in those 300 days and not just physical, I would say. I would think it's been mindset and kind of a lot of other kind of life stuff as well. So yeah. let's just kind of start, you know, 300 days ago, like what, where were you and why did you make the decision to you know, I think you you knew about me through, was it through Lori? How'd you find out about me in the first place? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what I assumed. I assumed that Lori was kind of, so yeah, most of you guys know my significant other Lori is in the, the beauty or the esthetician or the, you know, the spa world. And so Heather found me through um, her connection to Lori. And did you start listening to the podcast first or did you like, how did you get, how did you get to know me and how'd you find out about the program? Yeah. So even backing up a little bit, further than that. Um, there was probably six months prior to that, I turned 50. Okay. So it was one of those things where it's like, okay, now that I'm 50, it's time to evaluate my life. Like, what am I doing? Do I like what I'm doing? Do I like what I'm seeing? All of that. Okay. And on top of it, it was sort of like, okay, now I'm that much older. So I need to pay attention to my health a little bit more. Okay. And so I, you know, there's a history of like heart disease and diabetes, and I knew I didn't want to go in that direction, obviously, but I didn't know what to do. 
So I'm kind of a creature of like, I need to research everything to death and analyze it all, get it on paper, read it a thousand times, go over it in my mind, figure out if it's going to work for me, go back, research it some more yeah. and then finally make a decision. So it was like two months after that, I decided, okay, okay now something needs to be done. Okay. So the only thing that I could really find that I hadn't tried yet, because mm -hmm. I've tried everything for like right. the last 15 years yeah. to change. And I always thought I ate fairly okay, but then looking at it, I was like, well, probably not so much. So I tried intermittent fasting okay. and then, um, you know, did that for a few months. And then I was also part of Lori's um, beauty biz club. Yeah. And she just randomly did a little like three minute, live I think you guys were in the car uh -huh. and she was talking about how you were going to start this six week ignite thing yeah. and you know people should give it a try so yeah. I was like well you know what what do I have to lose why not I'm just sitting here on the couch not doing anything in the evening anyway so I tuned into that okay and know what it was about that so I I didn't listen to a podcast beforehand okay. I hadn't yet read the book I didn't I knew you existed because from being in her group I had yeah. heard your name but quite honestly like I had yeah. no idea what that meant and I just thought you know what what whatever I'll give That's it a awesome. try so I did that and during that six weeks I seriously had no expectation okay to change how I felt I was like, I've tried everything. I'm going to try this, but I know I'm not going to have any results. Oh, like, wow. I really didn't think I was going to have any results at all. Okay. That's so interesting. You know, people yeah. um, find me through, through a variety of ways. You know, Lori's is one avenue, but some people read the book first, some people listen to the podcast. Yeah. I've had people listen to every, you know, 200 episodes of the podcast, and they'll be like, okay, now I think I trust you. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. my gosh, like 200 <laughs> episodes. Like, gee whiz. Right. And you know, you were kind of the same way, like you kind of had to research and, and process and all those things. That's interesting to me that you went into this. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but it's also, I think it's fairly normal. I think a lot of people start, you know, you know, I hate the diet word now that you know me really right. well. I don't, I don't really believe in diets. I think a lot of people start diets or processes or programs with the expectations of nothing's probably going to happen for them because they've, they've tried so many things that haven't worked. So that's interesting. When inside of that journey did that start to shift for you? Do you remember? Like in that six weeks, you mean? Yeah. Did it did yeah. it shift in the six weeks? Oh, totally. Okay. Because I think you had us make a video or something. I did, it, yeah. It was, you know, um, you know, I can't even remember, like I'm paraphrasing this, but basically I'm thinking about advertisements and you were saying like, you know, you could lose up to 10 pounds in yeah. six weeks, you know, and and I was like, okay, I'll be lucky. I'll be lucky if I lose a pound. It's yeah, I think I made you guys, or I didn't make you. I asked you guys to record a video with yeah. what you wanted to get out of the process. Like, yeah. what was your what was your goal? And I made you guys do a video on that or yeah. ask you to do a video. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so my goal, obviously, I mean, my goal was to lose 10 pounds in six weeks. Although yeah. I think I had a caveat in there that I was like, but it's probably only going to be one. I'll be lucky if it's five. Right. And during that six weeks, I just started tracking. Uh, I'm also like a data collector. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had to track everything and write it all down. So I started to see shifts and I was like, what the heck? Okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't hit the 10 pound mark, but a lot of that in hindsight, I look at it and it's because I didn't believe it was going to happen. Sure. You know, was, like I was like, oh, well, whatever. And, um, so within that, I was like, oh, something's working here. So I think at the end of that, you had offered up that we could join in the program. Yeah. So I was like, well, okay, I'm going to keep this going for a while because this is working for me. And I didn't have an end goal in mind. Like I had no idea what I wanted my weight to be at. I had no, I just knew like I had aches and pains I wanted to get rid of. I didn't want my blood pressure to go up any more than it. It was not that it was high, but right. you know, everything up there. I didn't want my blood sugar going up. I didn't want, you know, all these health things. I yeah. didn't want, you know, so I was like, all right, let's just keep this going. And then as I'm tracking, like the weight is coming down. Right. And it's coming down and it's coming down. And I can't, and 
I have to say that I was transposing the number. So I would look at the number on the scale, say for instance, it said like, uh, I don't even know, like, one uh, like 125 or something on the scale like in my mind I'm looking at it and I'm staring at it and I'm like 152 and then I'm like no wait that says 125 like right. that was very surprising to me yeah. like I'm shifting in my brain like oh wait no that's not I'm not in the 150s what am yeah. I even thinking well you because you had kind of programmed yourself to yeah. be like I think you started at like 155 yeah. And I think your your brain just said, "Hey, we're gonna we're probably gonna be 155 forever, right?" And yeah. so it's like even when the number shifted by 25 pounds, like you looked at it, and your brain still read to you yeah. the the old number. So that that's a beautiful analogy for like the programming that that this brain can do to us. Yeah. Even when you had success, your brain was still trying to tell you that you were stuck back in that old identity. Mm -hmm that nothing works for you and blah. And that's so interesting to me. And so it's like, was there a struggle? Because oftentimes when there is that change, that shift, it's like, we don't want to get too excited about it because it's like, we're always kind of waiting for like the quote unquote, the bad thing to happen. Like, yeah. so what was that like for you? Yeah, so I was waiting for the shoe to drop and because <laughs> I'm a data collector. Like I'm oh. stepping on the scale every day. I'm like, this is like, I'd wake up in the morning and I was like, okay, I, there's no way, like that was just a fantasy. Like yeah. that's not real. And I get on the scale and I was like, oh, I guess it is. I guess, I guess it is real. That's so cool. it, it was hard. I mean, and it's still hard. There's still yeah. a lot turning around it. It's still hard to grasp the idea that yeah. like, wow, I did this. I did this after 14 years. Like I was not new to exercise or new yeah. to the nutrition thing. I'd done that in a past life. Then I had a family, got a, you know, got involved in my business, things shifted. So, you know, it was just, it was coming back around to yeah. that. And like thinking, okay, I can do this. And it doesn't have to be so complicated. Like sometimes I make things complicated. Well, and that's not just you, like at humans, like we love to create complexity because it's almost like if I can make something so complex that it's almost not understandable, then, well, of course it might not work for me. And then if it doesn't, it's really not my fault. It's kind of like, it was so challenging in the first place. How could anybody do this? Right. Yeah. We do that a lot. And so that's one of the things we try to do in, in the program, the Thrive Forever Fit program is I try to, to like deconstruct that complexity and really get it down to like the granular things. And so for you, you had a mindset, you had a belief that nothing works for me. Yes, I'll try this, but it's not going to work. I'll do it, but okay, Jay, whatever, you know? And so that was, that was even more in, in my perspective, that's been more beneficial for you, that mindset shift than the, you know, than the 35 pounds of weight loss. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because that, because that's transformational for a lot of things, because I think you probably, you looked at a lot of things in life through the lens of challenge or struggle or right. going to be hard. And now your perspective shifted a little bit. So, so let's talk about that. Like, how has it affected, you know, work, business, family, the whole nine yards? Has it, has it changed the game for any of those? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, and I'm still learning. I can't yeah. say it's totally changed the game because yeah, it's, still it's a process I, I'm, you know, working on in that aspect, but I've learned to sort of step back a little bit. So for instance, like thinking about family, like I have two teenagers that can be complicated <laughs> right. in and of itself. And, you know, one, I was just trying to get through graduation and, you know, he's a unique kid and he's a good kid. And there are all these things he's got going for him. And as a parent, you cheer that on, but you know, he marches to the beat of his own drum and he is like, we all need to take a lesson from him once in a while. Like he does what works for him. Right. It's not about you. It's not about all these outside influences. And that was difficult for me. Like I had to stay, take a step back and be at peace with some of the decisions that he has chosen Yeah. and just sort of like, let it go and understand that like, that's all a process for him. And we should all be a little more like that in the sense that like, 
why do we care what so and so thinks about that? Like, I don't know where he got that from, but you know, good for him. And that's a thing that I'm learning. I can't say I've learned because yeah. I'm learning how to do that. Like, not worry about what other people are thinking about me and oh, not yeah. that, or me as a parent because he's right. not doing something you should be doing. Right. Well, it, you, you're you you kind of said it earlier. You're a data collector. You're an analyzer. Yeah. You're a yeah. You're very analytical. And so when, you know, when he shows up and he's like, oh, I'm just going to do this. Like you're, you're pulling out an Excel spreadsheet and you're like, that's not, the, that's, that's not the right, right answer. Right. That, that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's not on the graph. Like you've, that's right. not, you know, so he's actually yeah. the outlier, right? There's always that data point. That's kind of like, why is what is that data point doing up there? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. And for somebody like you who loves data and numbers and, and things to make sense, that can be, whoa. And what I've what I've noticed about you is like you've kind of had to un unlearn maybe the wrong terminology, but you've had to do that for yourself because through the through the process and the program, you still have some of those moments where you think that you should be perfect, right? Yes. Or, or that you're not doing everything that you could be. And I consistently right. remind you that listen, excellence, right? Or the quest for excellence doesn't mean perfection. It, there's going to be challenges. And there's going to be adversities. Right. And there's there's going to be days where it just doesn't work right. And so I think that's something you've kind of had to unlearn and then relearn that like, hey, this is just kind of part of the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's and been started, massive. Like, it, it, that's a big shift in the way that I look at things, yeah. which is interesting in the sense, like when I look at it, I think, okay, I'm a massage therapist. And prior to that, I was a social worker. So you know, like there's not a lot of data in either one of those things. Right. Those are all very subjective type things. But I think I, you know, I would say I'm successful or have been successful in both of those things because of like I look at both of those things from like sort of a scientific yeah. way of looking thing. So when I'm working on someone, it truly is like, okay, what's the science around yeah. that? And of course, you know, science is data. And right. Yeah. So you found a what you found a way for your brain to function yeah. in those worlds where it's yeah. not a lot of like hard data points, right? Right. And I'm right. the same way. Like I'm I'm a huge, I love like data and science and, and human psychology, but oftentimes like it's you know what the brain should do or what you would like it to do isn't often what it does. Yeah. And then it's like that can get really confusing if you have like the rigidity around that. So right. I think that, you know, the development of having more of like a flexible growth type mindset where things don't have to be like, you know, fixed and hard right. is really beneficial. And that, I think it's a beautiful thing for that. You've kind of evolved into that. And it's no wonder that you had such a, you know, a, a negative thought process around weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. Or around something that might actually work because as a data collector and as an analyzer, like you've got plenty of things that you can look back and say, well, I did this program didn't work. Right. This program didn't work. Right. And you can, you've got all the plotting points. And so for, you know, the kind of what we do and kind of why I take a different approach is I come at, at it from the angle of like mindset first, right? Like let's, let's, why, why is our psychology telling us what our psychology is telling us? And if we can figure that out, then that can really be transformative in helping us make better decisions on the, the actual granular things like the food we consume or how right. we move our body. Right. right. So you've been really, you've been really, for someone who is, loves data, like yeah. that human is usually not very flexible when it comes to things that push her out. And so I want to commend you on being open Right. Because I'm very unconventional. Right. For these, these guys that don't get to listen to me yeah. a lot, like <clears throat> I do, we do a, lot, a weekly training call and they're often unconventional. Right. They're not usually they're not usually, hey, have a kale salad. Don't eat a donut. Like we don't we very rarely talk about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But we talk about a lot of like like the psychology around like if if you look at things through a different lens or a different perspective, it could really be game changing and, and you know, and, and differentiating for you. How has that been? Because I think the one thing when I think about you is you are successful, right? And a successful human, somebody who's like driven like that, 
often in in the with the I call because I always I refer to this as kind of a journey, right? Because it's never yeah. ending. It's like you can always you can always find a new endpoint to go yes. to and get to. How has that process been for you? Of like, you know, you know, knowing that there's not going to be a finish line. Like you don't have to end this anywhere, right? Right. It's hard. <laughs> in, all, in all honesty, it's really hard because it's like, right, there is no end game. So I have to realize that for myself and not um, not attach like the emotions to it, the yeah. worry around it. The pressure. Or, right, the pressure. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you that's one of your one of your default settings is kind of like apply extra pressure, right? Yeah. Like we'll use a, you know, the massage therapist in you is like, yeah. if there's an area that needs help, I'm going to apply more pressure, right? So it's like, it's how your brain, yeah. yeah, it's how your brain works. Like you add, you add pressure. You also do that to yourself from a, a psychological and an emotional stand perspective. And that's where you've kind of had to grow and evolve and say, okay, Heather, like, it's not always necessary to beat myself up. Sometimes it's that I need to look at things a little bit differently from a different perspective. And I think that's been, that's played a massive um, role in your success and your, in your yeah. continued involvement and, and growth. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's helped in, in the business world too. So, yeah. you know, I've been a massage therapist for 19 years, but I really only started my business eight, 10 years ago. I mean, I say eight in this location, which looked very different than it does now. Yeah. And it was most recently just being comfortable with the idea of, okay, it's not really what I had in mind. And partially because over the course of eight years, there's been all kinds of crap that's taken place here in the business. And I had to shift each time. And that was not an easy thing for me either. Right. And that's because, you know, I had it all mapped out. This right. is the way it was supposed to be. And most recently, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've sort of been a little more laid back about it, you know, like, okay, well, you know, if I'll, I'll work hard and I'll do what needs to be done, but I'm not going to, you know, get depressed if something isn't exactly what I had on my list right or or think i need to throw in the towel which you know i don't do i mean what i what <laughs> i've watched what i've watched you do is is you've shifted from a mindset of overwhelm and i don't mean overwhelm in a bad way because you're even when you're overwhelmed you perform right but but right. you've shifted from a perspective of like well this is overwhelming to this is just kind of an opportunity like if i look right. at this from from an opportunity perspective I'm going to come out on the other side of this much better, like emotionally and from a business perspective and everybody right. around me is going to, to benefit and, and, you know, and, and win from that movement. And I think that's a great pivot and transition is like, you've taken something that was very personal, like weight loss, right? That's a very personal thing. Like, yes, everybody else kind of understands that they want to lose weight or don't or do or whatever, but the journey is a super personal and like individualistic thing you've been able to transition like what you've learned from that into a very public thing, which is kind of your business. Right. And that's a beautiful skill. Like that's something that like is, is very valuable. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate to yeah, that's cool. be able to look at it that way now. Yeah. Let's talk about the 50, right? Cause I'm, I'm coming up, yeah. I'll be 48 in October. So I'm coming up on 50. So was this a progressionary thing? Like, did you start like thinking like, at 47, 48, 49, or was it when you got to 50, it was kind of like, oh, wow. Like what happened? Oh, Walk me through that. started lo looking at it when I was 40. <laughs> oh, well, for, oh, that's right. Cause you need to analyze. So you've been, you've been collecting data for 10 years. Oh exactly. my gosh. Heather. And it all out. Like, what's this going to look like? Oh, wow. That had to be yeah. a rough 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, it was, uh, Again, it's one of those things where like, I'm learning to make peace with the idea that, you know, I'll now be 52 this year. So it's sort of like, okay. You know? Well, first you don't, you don't look 52. You, well, nobody would ever, nobody would ever peg you for that. You don't, you know, you have a very young and vivacious mindset and personality and all that. So I think age is just an absolute number. And so I think hopefully you're, you're coming into that as well as like, 
52 is young. Like I got a yeah, long, I got, a, I got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, my goal is to be like, you know, 96 and out there, you know, yeah. the pavement taking like five mile walks or whatever it might be. Me too. And I think, and I don't think there's anything unrealistic about that. Right. It's like, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that has to do with mindset. I think most people that I know that are, you know, old and I'm using that in air quotes old is they believe they're old. They think they're old. They, they, they talk like they're old. They act like they're old. They identify as, Oh, I'm too old for that. Like, I never want to say that. Yeah. Again, so I just frowned about that at home. Like, you know, I, you know, I am the old lady and, you know, (laughs) Well, so we, you know, we joke around. But. There's a beauty in that, though. Like you're the yeah. old lady at 52, yeah. Act, acting, acting, and and moving, and 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 having right. success like you're 32. Right. So that's yeah. a beautiful, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. How has and I don't I don't know the answer to this. So this is a completely blind question. How has this process and this transformation and involvement, or however you want to describe it, how has it affected the people around you, or have you noticed anything like with you know? family and, and clients and, and just close, yeah. you know, people like what, what's been that, what's that been like? You know, I don't, I think family sort of subtly, like, you know, my family knew this is what I was doing. And, um, every one of, you know, like from my husband to my sisters always encourage it. No one has ever in anything that I've tried, yeah. no one ever said, you can't do it like that's just and in fact that's not even how we grew up like there right. was the never like you can't do something that's awesome like, yeah if that's what you want to do then you know give it a shot um and you know my husband's super ambitious so he also would never like those words would never come out of his mouth to anybody right. um but I don't think anybody noticed it right away you know I think yeah. it took a while and and I often I mean, I internalize a lot of things. So when the wheels are turning, you know, nothing's coming out of my mouth. So often people don't even know what I'm doing or how I'm doing it until like, bam, it's like, you know, happening. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's funny that you asked the question about the family because even just last night, my husband said, so if there was one thing about your life that you could change, what would it be? Oh, I love that and question. That, that's a weird I, one too. You're like, what? Yeah. what? You're and like, it's, said, it's Wednesday. What are you doing? I, <laughs> and I was like, huh. I'm like, I don't think anything. Like okay. I feel very happy right now with my life. Love and I'm not quite sure I would have said that back when I was fit. Like if, if you had asked me that question, on my 50th birthday, I might have had a laundry list of things that I would change. I don't know what they would be, um, but I'm sure that there was something, yeah. you know, that I was unhappy with. So, you know, I feel like I was pretty happy with that. And then, you know, as far as clients go in my professional life or out in the world, you know, people notice the physical change. Yeah. I've always talked with clients about like their wellness or things that they're working on or, you know, my clientele is based um, primarily on retired individuals. Okay. So they've already had a little bit of shift in their life, things like that. So, you know, they're older than I am. They have a lot to offer me. And so we get into these conversations. And so with a few people, um, you know, it, things have come about and I was like, I don't even know what the conversation turns into. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you know, for me, I'm like, well, you know, I did this thing and it all started with, you know, a shift in mindset. Like I, you know, and I, I feel the need to go into it and tell yeah. people about it because it's, it really has influenced the way that I look at everything. I mean, I was not like, I'm not a negative person. I no. wasn't that a complainer about things but I did process a lot in my brain so this is a little bit different in the sense that I you know I I love this visible people I love that I don't and I don't want to skate over what you just said because I think it's so vital and for me it's the most like as as whatever you want to call me your coach or whatever it is the coolest thing that you've ever, that I know about you and what you said is like that question your husband asked you and you said you wouldn't change anything, right? And being happy with, 
because you know I, I preach and teach this to you guys all the time it's like weight loss is just a side effect yeah right like that's i mean yes it's awesome if, if you're if you want to lose weight or if you medically need to or for longevity or health purposes but like getting to that place in life where it's just you're happy and you feel abundant and you love yeah. life like that's the that's the holy grail like that's the coolest part of anything you know so yeah that's awesome I'm, I'm super proud of you that's awesome yeah yeah I thought it was great uh, it you know, took me a second to think it, I was like you know you run down and I'm like yeah do I need to change something is right. there something I want to change in my life and then I'm like no I guess not I'm pretty happy with the way things are well look I love the fact that he's asking deep questions it's like yeah. hey, how how was your day and you're like what would you change about your life you're like what yeah. I thought we were just talking about our day like that seems aggressive, but I love it. So tell them I'm a huge fan of that question. I'm going to start, I'm going to throw that into my routine and just okay. throw, people, throw people off for a while. Yeah. So let, let's close up. Just tell me a little bit more about you. Cause you know, you, we have a lot of people in the Thrive program that, that know you and they know your journey and your success. But so you said you were, you started your career as a social worker. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then transitioned out of that, like in be, and started your massage therapy practice and all of that. Right. So, so growing up, were you like a, I mean, little girl, I want to be a social worker. How, yeah. how'd, that come, how'd that come about? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't know how that came about. I mean, I kind of do. So we grew up in, you know, I'm, I'm from Vermont for anyone right. who doesn't know. So I grew up in a small town. Um, I still live in Vermont. I just moved to another small town. Okay. Um, but I grew up in the country. I had horses. We had, you know, responsibilities. So I think, you know, for me, things started with responsibilities. And um, my dad, my dad was a hard worker. I'm the oldest of four. So there was definitely a work ethic that was expected out of us. Um, I knew I wanted to... Uh, my parents divorced when I was 25. So growing up, just to put that out there, there was a lot of chaos and turmoil in my house for many years. So I knew I didn't want that for myself, but I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I was supposed to do in life. So kind of like my son, I guess, in that way, like he yeah. doesn't know what his purpose is. I just wasn't talented enough to play guitar. So I was like, okay, what do I need to do? The only thing I know how to do is go to school. That's like all I've ever done. So I went to school and I thought I was going to be an art history major. And that's actually okay. how I started out. And then I needed more money. I couldn't really support myself in school. And so I had to get another job. And I was a waitress before. And I started working in a pharmacy. And the guy that I worked for had a delivery system in the pharmacy. And now this is in the late 80s, like, you know, in our, in our little community. Yeah. And I would use his car and I would deliver medications to old or housebound people. Yeah. And so I just started talking to them more and more. And, you know, there were often times I could hear him on the phone and it, in the context of the conversation was they were trying to figure out, can I afford my medication oh. or can I afford food? And oh. he was coming at it from the perspective of you just will deliver it to you. We'll right. figure it out later. Right. So I had that piece of him as a boss looking at like, there's a problem here and he's not, a you know, like he wasn't wanting to take their money he was just wanting to help them right. and and then my job was to assist him in doing that and so just and then I realized okay you know what maybe that's what I'm meant to do help people in some way yeah so I somehow got into on the social work track in college because I didn't I knew I didn't want to be a nurse necessarily I liked the idea of trying to figure out people, how people ticked, what made people work, that sort of thing. And then from there, I gave up social work, internal politics more than yeah. anything. And, but really like, I still wanted to help people in some way. So right. how can I do it? again? I didn't want to be a nurse or a doctor or anything like that. So I was like, well, massage sounds good. So that's cool. I mean, you know, in quintessentially, I mean, like you said, it's like, it's all been an evolution of like, yeah of service of like helping people feel better whether yeah. that's mentally physically 
emotionally, all of those things. So it's kind of like, it sounds like you found your path, right? It was just kind of like, for a lot of us, it's not always linear, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is so, that is so cool. And so yeah. for anybody that doesn't know about Vermont or has never been, <clears throat> my significant other, Lori, grew, was born, grew up in Vermont. And so I went to Vermont for the first time, probably 16 years ago. And I just remember thinking like, this is one of the most unique places. And, you know, I grew up in Texas, um, which is the, the most gigantic thing you've ever seen, right? I went so, to college in Texas for a semester. Where at? Stephen F. Austin. State no way. In yeah. Nacogdoches. Yeah. Nacogdoches, yeah. yeah, the Lumberjacks. Yeah. Very cool. So you know you know how large Texas is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like it's yeah, massive. Yeah, I live there now. Yeah. yeah. And then you go to Vermont, which is one of the smallest right. states you've ever been in. I just remember thinking like, this is one of the most unique places yeah. that I've ever been. And I still have that feeling every time I go back. So Lori grew up in like Barrie, Montpelier, yep. that kind of area. So where where are you in, in respects to that? I am probably an hour and 15 minutes like southwest of okay. Montpelier area. Okay. So um, you, are you familiar with Burlington? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's one main highway that goes through Burlington, Route right. 7. If yes. you took that south an hour and 10 minutes, you'd hit my town. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah the last time we were there last summer, we flew out of Burlington. So yeah, yeah Burlington is yeah. a very, very unique town. Um, and really cool. Like it's very like yeah. artsy and, and all that. Yeah. But I just always, I'm always enamored with Vermont. Every time I go back, it's always, because it is, there are, there are those little small town you know, Mayberry-esque right. places that you don't really, you don't get in other parts of the country. So it's it's very unique. And so I only bring that up because if nobody's been there, when you say like small town, I think they're probably thinking like, oh, like 20,000, 30,000 people. Like, no, we're talking like- 4,000 in my town. Yeah, yeah. We're ta- <laughs> and that's the size town I grew up in in Texas is 4,000 yeah. people. So I get it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's very unique and very, it's a very interesting place to grow up. And so you were born, raised, and then did you go back to college in Vermont after you went to Stephen F. Austin or no? I did. Okay. Very yeah. cool. In I Berlin. Yeah. In Bur- okay. So in Burlington. Right. So Burlington would be the equivalent. I mean, it's, it's a fairly large city. It is. It's, yeah. it's the, I don't, I don't know. It might be the largest city. Yeah, definitely the largest or, city in Vermont I've been to, but but or knows? close to it if yeah. they factor in like the little suburbs, the suburbs and everything. Yeah. That is so cool. That is very cool. So just to wrap up, yeah. what would you say the like your biggest takeaway so far of like starting out day one? Like, I mean, okay, Jay, cool. Don't believe anything you have to say this is not going to work for me to kind of where you are now. Like yeah. what's the, what's been the, what's been the biggest shift or the shift that kind of like is, is the most top of mind for you? I think just learning to be open to it, you know, and learning to, you know, although I say like I'm a data collector, there are things I didn't do in the beginning because I didn't think it would work for me. So, you know, I didn't, I wasn't doing some, some of my data that I, you know, I wish I would have done. I wish I had taken like before photo, which I didn't because I thought, well, what's the point? Yeah, what's the purpose? Um, Right. So I think just being open to it and maybe walking in with the, I can do this attitude rather than the, I can't do this attitude. You know, and I think that's that's such a great, you know, analogy because I think a lot of people show up because I think if we, if we surveyed a hundred people and we said, Hey, what's your experience been like with diets? I mean, the, the, uh, the phrase that I've probably heard mo- more in my career than any other phrase is, Jay, I've tried everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think we've, you know, we've all probably said that in some respects around weight loss or some diet or something that's like, sounds too good to be true. And like, we've kind of been, we've been like over manipulated some, some by our own, by our own selves. Right. And then by the industry and by, you know, gurus and diets. And so I think it's, it's challenging to be open, but if you can, if you can approach a process, whatever it is, me or anybody else, if you can approach it with an openness, I think you'll have more success because you won't already have that preconceived notion. That's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, starting to date somebody new and like, Oh, they're going to break my heart. It's like, well, that's a horrible way to enter a relationship. Right. right? <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and so if you think about it like that, it's like, you know, whatever it is that you decide to step into, whether it's a weight loss journey or a, a business journey or whatever, that openness really sets you up for like the opportunity, you know, to right. be less overwhelmed and more opportunistic. So I think you've done an awesome job in, in growing into that. And I'm super proud of you. Awesome. Thank you. And I just want to say before we go, I'm, I'm grateful that you, you know, spent a year analyzing and listening and, and, and doing your flow charts and everything <laughs> yeah. and that you finally, you know, were, were gracious enough to give me the opportunity to be a part of your journey. I don't take it for granted. And I'm super, super grateful for you. Well, thank you. I'm grateful to you too and the program and everyone in it. I mean, Aww. everyone is just so fantastic. They, you know what it is? It's, I always say this and I don't think people believe me. It is really a collection of just awesome humans, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I've, I've been in a lot of groups and masterminds and programs and things like that. And I, and I, obviously I'm biased, but I've never been around such a supportive and, right. you know, as, as a, as a whole group of people who just want to see other people win. And they're kind of on the same journey in different fashions, right? Like right. we've had, we've had people that have lost like over 150 pounds that are yeah. in the process. It's like, yeah. so your journeys are totally different, but there's a camaraderie of like just respect and love and, and appreciation and gratitude. And so Thank you yeah. for being an awesome part yeah. of that. Yeah, thank well, you. You're welcome. Guys, I'm glad you got the opportunity to meet Heather. And Heather, thanks for sharing your story with the world. And we'll be back next week with a, another awesome episode. Heather, we'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. All Bye. Right, bud. Bye.